developing topics. We live in an age of information overload. An ever-expanding array of media drown us under more information than we could ever consume in our lifetimes. In any given instance, we are likely to be audience for communication by radio, billboards, instant messaging, cell phone, email, video streaming, newspapers, and television. There's practically no end to the number of media used to persuade, inform, and slash or entertain us. So, a lot of people find it increasingly difficult to concentrate on any one signal for too long. In our media-saturated environments, selecting a single topic to consider in depth is like trying to find a firm place to stand while sinking in quicksand. Despite your best efforts, you can find yourself buried. Part of what separates good writers from great writers is the ability to organize and relate multiple ideas in one place. In this chapter, we will explore how the concept of topics, or to use the traditional term, topway has developed and how you might begin to practice developing your own topics. Finding a place to stand fortunately, we are not the only generation in history to struggle with information overload. The arrival of any new communication technology has always increased the amount of information that was previously available. A large part of why new technologies create some upheaval is that they challenge the categories that came before. In the early days of printing presses, for example, some people complained about the number of available books and the lack of time to read all those books. One person went as far as to say that an abundance of books makes less studious. This old statement is similar to a current question. Does Google make us stupid? New York Public Library 1 1923. Despite these concerns, many of our ancestors found more productive ways to manage information overload, and their strategies remain helpful today. With the top way a word that refers to topics, but that also means places, ancient rhetoricians, including Aristotle and Cicero, developed techniques that writers use to gather, categorize, and identify important topics worthy of discussion. Top way have two functions that are still important now, organizing information and exploring common features and sets of information. First, top way were used to organize information. Using notebooks, rhetoricians gathered research material, including common sayings, overheard quotes, everyday opinions, annotations on texts, and insights. After collecting these materials over time, a writer would begin to see similar ideas repeat and begin to make relationships with other ideas. These similarities would form headings that group together related sayings or sentiments. This form of topway would later develop into what became called commonplace books. Not unlike your computer's web browser and the multiple bookmarks you might collect, these books helped writers and speakers collect and organize information so they could prepare talks and write texts. Commonplaces were the storehouses of information that helped writers engage with civic and cultural life. The second use of topway identified similar features or places that occurred in arguments. So-called common topics were those general features shared in any idea or argument regardless of the content of the argument, including definition, relationship, and slash or division. For instance, ancient rhetoricians might ask is the argument about a definition. If they discovered that a definition was, in fact, controversial, then they knew they could follow certain common patterns and use common strategies. Other common topics included comparison, cause and effect contradictions, and antecedent slash consequence. These common features provided a structure for any arguments. The structure helped the writer identify what types of arguments might be available and which arguments were likely to be less successful. It gave them a place to stand, so to speak. Three, it's clear that this way of thinking remains with us today. We often describe someone's argument as taking a position within a debate or controversy. The special topics are specific to particular forms or uses of language. Ancient rhetoricians identified three broad types of communication, deliberative, judicial, and ceremonial. Each of these presented rhetoricians with special arguments most useful for that form of communication. In deliberative communication, for example, issues that concern the future of government and legislation were most important. In these discussions, the topics most available, three in a later chapter, on claim types, you will read more about what we mean by places to stand, or stasis, were suggested by questions like what is the good? What is expedient for accomplishing a good society? And what is advantageous? Judicial matters included justice and injustice, especially in courtrooms. Finally, the special topics germane to ceremonial issues included questions like what is noble? What is virtue? And who is good? If you consider that we still pay a lot of attention to the language used in legislature's congress, for example, in courtroom trials and on ceremonial occasions, you can see that special topics, even though they are an ancient invention, are still relevant. Out of a few initial questions, rhetoricians have developed many topics in many cultures. For instance, the commonplace that America is the best nation on earth is frequently repeated to stake a position and develop an argument. Or consider a topic like voting laws. You could easily collect various sources that present both common topics and special topics. Common topic issues of cause and effect perceived voter fraud and revisions of voting laws or definition would defines illegal voter registration. Easily give way to special topics found in deliberative discussions what makes for good elections laws. What is expedient for ensuring an inclusive voting system. And frequently, the shared commonplace that voting is the lifeblood of democracy helps ground and sustain many relevant arguments on the topic. So top by help writers organize and explore research material. That kind of organization can help us develop our own positions on current issues. Back to the future of topics today, the commonplace books that rhetoricians once maintained to organize and develop topics for their own use have been replaced by books, libraries, television, radio, and the internet. A lot of the work done by people in the media, government, business, and academia comes down to taming the flow of information that's now faster than ever. As an academic reader and writer, you're joining that effort. One of your goals should be to become a critical thinker and writer who possesses the skills to organize, explore, and develop topics on your own. You can gain those skills with practice, lots of practice. To help that practice, you can use some tools you're already familiar with and some others that may be new to you. Finding items for a topic students sometimes believe they really don't know what to write and argue about. When the internet was developing a few years ago as a common communication medium, a lot of commentators believed it would make being an informed researcher and citizen easier. After all, having access to the internet means having access to more information than anyone has ever had access to before in human history. But the problem is that having access to the internet means having access to more information than anyone has ever had access to before in human history. To start looking for and working with a topic, for instance, your first inclination might be to use Google and simply search for a term. If we try to look for information on voting laws, though, we get a return of over 32 million items in less than a second. There are two problems with this approach at least. First, the quality of the items should cause us some doubt. This basic search returns Wikipedia articles, news stories, government agency sources, and even a nonprofit organization website. While some of these might be helpful, the items have neither given us a detailed place to begin our topic nor a clear place to stand. Our second problem concerns the amount of information. We just can't sift through 32 million items, so we need a tool that does some of the selecting and organizing for us. Google News is one example of just such a tool. 
This site allows us to better focus on a topic as it unfolds in real time. If we use our voting law search term, Google News, and its real-time coverage option posts the most recent news articles in the subject, provides investigative in-depth articles, makes available opinion pieces, and even includes a timeline for articles published on the topic. These features give us places for specific types of items, and they help us because they are already loosely organized and defined. Another useful feature of Google News and similar sites is that it allows you to identify, define, and save news categories. In addition to the standard categories U.S., World, Entertainment, Sports, Finance, and Politics, Google News also allows for specialized categories that you can design and customize. So, if voting laws is a term of interest, creating a new category on Google News will present a constantly updating category for voting laws. Your own category can be much more specific and even involve items that focus on Utah or even Salt Lake City. Next step sites like Google News are great places to begin research on a topic because they provide a range of different types of items and a helpful model for how to organize those items. On the other hand, these sites are bad places to end your research. Google News, for instance, does not capture scholarly resources, academic articles, research monographs, scholarly book reviews. These sources are often vital to provide even more in-depth and focused coverage on topics. A later chapter will address using Marriott Library's resource more specifically. For the purposes of beginning your research topic, however, selecting a range of articles from an array of sources will help you explore the various places contained in any topic. For instance, a typical news story is usually brief and only has to offer minimal information. The common topics most likely to occur here are those best used to communicate basic facts, cause effect definition, and slash or antecedent slash consequence. An investigative journalism essay, a longer piece taking much more time to develop and much more space for coverage will be better suited for more nuanced kinds of common topics such as contradictions, limits, and slash or similarity slash difference. More particular examples, such as YouTube videos of a politician's speeches, might offer exposure to those special topics found in deliberative, judicial, and ceremonial discourses. Opinion essays or op-eds might offer access to commonplaces and a good place to see how they are used. But whichever source types you use, you should know that any well-researched paper will be supported by a balance of items from many different media, viewpoints, and levels of expertise. Notebooks at this point, you are probably wondering how or why notebooks are used in an age when any smartphone can access the internet, the largest notebook ever created. The answer is simple. Having one place to collect and relate your information makes the job of developing a topic easy and effective. We don't just mean a traditional paper notebook, though. There are several free software options available to develop the store of items necessary for research. Free versions of collection software, such as Evernote Zotero, or Microsoft's EndNote Free to University of Utah students offer robust information management options. We recommend, for the purpose of developing topics and essays for this course, that you adopt Zotero to serve as the storehouse for your research. For These applications can help you develop the same organizational strategy sought by ancient rhetoricians. In each application, you are given the option to organize your information in hierarchically useful ways. Much like the headings found in simple notebooks, these programs allow you save files. These may be generated as notes or clips from online sources. Collect those files into folders not unlike your own computer's desktop and create tags for individual items, making connections between items located in different folders. Each of these organizational strategies aid you in forming your topic. As you collect more items, you can generate more connections so your understanding of the topic becomes more nuanced and informed. For the librarians at the Knowledge Commons on the second floor of Marriott Library can help you find additional notebook type software. Figure one, Zotero interface. Why should you develop topics? Good question. It can feel like a real investment of time to get organized with the topics that interest you. But good writing is recursive. That is, it requires multiple passes through researching, drafting, and revising. Any topic we develop is a result of the time we spend reading, collecting, and relating ideas. Our job as critical thinkers and writers is to establish places of connection between items otherwise thought not to be connected. As you continue this course, you will learn about more ways of developing these initial topics into informed, effective, and persuasive arguments. We hope this chapter has given you a start to do. 1. Register for and slash or download a notebook application Zotero, Evernote, EndNote, or another app of your choice. Create a folder in the app to serve as the heading that organizes the items in your topic. 2. Choose a topic term, such as voting rights, and perform a Google News search. If necessary, narrow your term and create your own category to focus your topic. Click the See Real-Time Coverage option. What kinds of articles are listed? What common topics are used in those articles cause slash effect definition relationships? Does your topic involve special topics deliberative, judicial, ceremonial? If so, define the questions asked what is virtuous. Good. Just, what if any commonplaces are used? 3. From your Google News search, A. Collect six items from each section. B. Create folders and slash or subfolders that organize each type of item from each section. C. Tag each item with three or four descriptions. 4. Write a brief introduction, 250 words to your item collection that defines the topic of the collection and briefly describes the items in that collection. 